Alright, by now you will probably know already that Windows 11 has support for a Android subsystem, which basically allows you to run your favorite Android apps right on your PC. It's cool, right? Well, you see, there's just one little caveat. There's no Google Play services support. Yeah, for someone like me and maybe you, since you clicked into this video already, Android without Google Play services support is basically unusable since we live already in a quote-unquote Google ecosystem. So my goal is, by the end of this video, you will have your very own Android 11 subsystem with full Google Play services support up and running on your Windows 11 PC. What is up everyone, this is Maxwell from Man Street Tech, and here's how to do it. As you can see, I have switched to the screen capture. But before we start, I'd like to go through some system requirements first. So, in order to proceed with this tutorial, your system needs to be running Windows 11. Well, obviously. You need at least 8GB of RAM, your system must be running on a solid state drive, and you need at least 32GB of usable space for it to function fully. When you're ready to proceed, simply open up one of the download links for the installation files in the description below. Here, I'm going with the Android file host link, but the files are also available on Google Drive and Baidu NetDisk. The time required for it to download may vary depending on your network connections. Meanwhile, we're also going to use one tool, and it's 7-Zip. This is not required, however, it is recommended because the built-in archive tool in Windows is just too slow. Simply go to the 7-Zip official website, which link is also in the video description, and select the latest version that is built for the 64-bit Windows. At the time of making this video, it is version 21.03, released in July 20th of 2021. Click download to, well, download of course. The downloading will be relatively fast since this is a relatively small file. Click on the downloaded 7-zip installer, click yes when it prompts if you want to open it, and then click install. And voila, that's it, 7-zip is successfully installed. Now we just need to wait patiently for the Android files to be downloaded. Okay. Let's proceed with the installation. Go to your downloads folder and you can see the compressed zip file that we have just downloaded. Simply select and drag it onto your desktop for ease of access. Now you can close all the tabs and windows that you have opened since we won't be using those anymore. Right click on the zip file and select show more options. In the new pop-up menu, we're not selecting extract, instead we're going to select 7-zip then extract here. Click it and the extraction process will begin. After extraction, there will be a new folder on your desktop with the same name as the zip file. Simply open it and you will see three things. The platform tools folder which contains the files we need to establish connections with the Android subsystem, the WSA folder which contains all the Android system images, and the commands text file. But before we touch any of those files, we need to first enable developer mode in Windows 11. Click on the Windows key to bring up the start menu, and type in develop. Then click into the developer settings page. Here we need to turn developer mode on. Now, with developer mode enabled, we are ready to begin the actual installation, finally. Open up the commands text file and we can adjust the window size, then drag it to the corner for easier reference. Bring up the start menu again and type in terminal. Right click on the Windows terminal option and select run as administrator. Select yes 
and it will bring up the elevated terminal shell that we will need for executing the commands. The first command is cd path to wsa folder. Go back to the installation files folder and right click on the WSA folder. Select copy as path. Go back to terminal, type cd space, then right click to paste. Hit enter and we're ready to execute the next command. The second command here, we will simply select and right click then copy. Go back to terminal, right click to paste, hit enter, and the installation will begin. After the installation completes, congratulations, you now have Android 11 fully installed on your PC. However, we're not quite done here, not even close. Bring up the start menu again, we can see Windows subsystem for Android is displaying here. Click to open, change subsystem resources to continues and enable developer mode. Click on the files option to launch Android. But here, it will give you an error message, unable to start, and telling us to enable virtual machine platform. Bring up the start menu again and type in feature, then select turn Windows features on or off from control panel. The loading will take a while, so just be patient. After it fully loads, scroll down to the bottom to find Virtual Machine Platform. Select and click OK. It will start to enable this feature. After it completes, we will need to restart our PC. OK, we're back after the restart. We can bring up the stop menu again and click into the Windows subsystem for Android. Click on the files option, it will start and will ask you for the firewall access. Click allow access. Now it will just load up the Android operating system as a whole. It might take a while, so just be patient. After it loads, the Android Files app will start right up. We can bring up the Stop menu and voila! There's the Google Play Store that we've all been waiting for. Click on it and it should just pop right up with ease. Here, obviously you will want to sign into your Google account. However, you will notice that the sign in button doesn't seem to do anything. Hmm. Well, don't worry, M3 Tech to the rescue. Simply close the Google Play Store, minimize the Files app, and open up the folder containing all the files again. Open the commands text file. You'll see that there's a second section named for fixing GMS login issues. What we need to do is open up the Platform Tools folder, press and hold Shift, then right click around the empty area. Select Open in Windows Terminal. We will first type CMD to bring up the classic command shell. Then we can reference the commands text file, copy the first command, right click to paste into the terminal. Hit enter, it will say failed to authenticate. Don't worry, if this happens, just do it again. Right click to paste it again, hit enter, and it will say already connected. That's exactly what we want. Go back to the commands text file and the second command is adb shell. We'll just type it in. Hit enter, then the third command, su, spelled su. Hit enter, it will say that you are now root, yay. Now we can execute the last command, finally. Set and force zero. Paste it in, hit enter, and we're all done. We can bring up the Google Play Store again, and voila, we can sign in now. Okay, 
that's quite a handful for the installation. But what does it actually feel like to use the Android subsystem for Windows with Google Play services? This is my personal Acer Concept D3 Easel laptop. Apparently, I have installed Android subsystem with Google Play services on it, so why don't we give a quick operational review? First, as you can see, Google Play Store works perfectly. Let's just have a quick IDA64 check to see what kind of hardware it detects under the Android subsystem. Wow, apparently this is a Google Pixel 5. We have 6GB of RAM allocated to Android out of the total 16GB this machine is equipped with. Let's check the CPU. Hmm. It actually detects the correct processor, Intel Core i7-10750H. All the information is correct in this column. Let's check the Android version. We have Android 11 with security patch from September. This is relatively fresh. Let's also see what other devices does the Android subsystem detect. Well, I think the camera is the only thing. I've also installed Nova Launcher 7 just to access the settings of the Android subsystem. In the About Device page, we can see the same info that we saw with IDA64. However, there's one thing that caught my eye. The build number start with S, which is the build number for Android 12 instead of 11 since 11 should start with R instead of S. Is this Android 12 in disguise? I have no idea. Let's just check the Easter egg. It could be a little bit finicky to trigger this with a mouse, but eventually we can get the 11 wording. Let's do some benchmarking just to see what level of performance does this Android on Windows thing gives us. I'll simply just install Geekbench 5 from Google Play Store. Apparently, it still thinks that this is a Pixel 5, but just with an Intel processor. Let's just run the benchmark. Okay, so we got a single core score of 1,169 and a multi-core score of 4,867. If you're technologically inclined enough, you can also see some detailed scores. What does it mean compared to the current Android flagships? Well, as we can see, a Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra has a single core score of 960, which is basically 200 points lower than this laptop. When coming to multi-core, this laptop absolutely dominates the competition, with the highest score on Geekbench rank being 3176. That's almost 1700 points lower than this laptop. I guess there will just be a bunch of Pixel 5s showing up in Geekbench with incredible scores in the coming month. Okay, now, why don't we test out some Android games on this laptop? As we can see, Minecraft launches flawlessly. Resizing also works, but we can only adjust the size proportionately since the aspect ratio stays the same. 
we can also go full screen, but it leaves some blank spaces around. This isn't technically full screen, but I'll take it. There is keyboard support in Minecraft. However, the mouse can only be used like a finger. So you need to click down in order to pan around. It's not the best experience playing Minecraft like this. However, this laptop has a touchscreen. This basically means that we can use the touchscreen to play like on a tablet. This works perfectly. The gameplay is also relatively smooth. However, there isn't the full graphic acceleration support as of now. Hopefully, this could be added in a future Android subsystem update. Let's try another game that is well, less popular than Minecraft, Grand Mountain Adventure. It's a skiing game which requires a lot of touch interactions. This is everything on high settings, FPS set to 60. As we can see, the gameplay is super smooth, better than Minecraft to say. What is another thing that people might use the Android subsystem for? Well, could be using your daily Android apps like YouTube, which doesn't even have a dedicated client app for Windows. I'll just pull up my channel, M3 Tech, and just play the latest video, other than this one. As we can see, the playback is very smooth. Also, if you haven't already, check out those new high-quality thumbnails that we got. Anyways, the tap to seek, scrolling through the video, all works perfectly. Another group of apps that doesn't have a dedicated client for Windows could be those social medias like Instagram. Here we have the official M3 Tech Instagram put up. Be sure to follow the Instagram page at M3 Tech Official for more behind the scene updates. As we can see, the resizing works flawlessly too, though the aspect ratio is still fixed. Let's just hope that the aspect ratio can be unlocked and changed in the new updates. Hey you! Yes, you! You heard me correct. Did you know that m Tech is now a member channel of ReMCN? We are partnering with Raylab to bring you better quality content in all ways. This could be the end of today's video, but the journey with M3 Tech doesn't stop here at all. If you liked today's video, please hit that like button and consider sharing our videos and follow our social media pages. If you didn't like it, I guess the other button works too. Want to see more videos like this? Please consider subscribing and make sure that the notification bell is on so you won't miss a single upload. We have a lot of videos queued up and coming soon, such as the Project 100 Watts. Don't want to wait? Well, there's already a lot of videos available on my channel M3 Tech and also Ray's channel Raylab. He really got a lot of tech gadgets for you all. Want to chat and discuss about the videos with our creators? Well, scan the QR codes right now to join either our WeChat group or the Telegram group, or maybe both if you're really a fan. Alright, and that's all for today. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.